I'm waiting for this to be awkward before I look up. <laughs> because it's actually decent. Ew, okay, that's disgusting. Uh Hello, welcome to the Horns Web Show. I am Andy, guitarist. That was really corny. Hello, I am Noah, vocalist extraordinaire. <laughs> I'm in. This guy. <laughs> our correspondent, Lil Nick. This is Lil Nick. <laughs> Great, now we're rapping. Close your eyes, look deep in your soul, step outside yourself and let your mind go. Last week we talked, I mentioned there that System of Down might be getting back together. Well, now it's confirmed they're touring in Europe. And it'll be in Germany and all those other places. Why can't Not this here. be Germany? I know. Phone him! Anyway. <laughs> cool, free phone. <laughs> Sweet. Three minutes. Also, uh, Judas Priest is going to be doing a world tour. It's going to be their final tour, which kind of sucks. So, I fucking want to go see them. You should Watch all come. Watch your language. Kids might be watching. Well, fuck those kids. Okay. Oh, oh there's a show coming up as of today, oh, yeah, which is sometime in December. We December, have a show. December 18th, we're playing with T Peacocks and the Hard Boys. Really not. And maybe yeah. some other bands. We, we'll give you a, a link in the uh, things for the, on the Facebooks, maybe. In the description, link to Facebook down there. And, uh, it's, uh, December 18th, December 18th at 8 o'clock at the Jam Crib. Jam Crib. Still never been there. Well, you, you will be. be there soon. I'll be wearing a kilt. I will be wearing a kilt, possibly, you maybe. As long as you're wearing underwear with it. I have no promises. I think no you say you have no underwear. Made. That, too. <laughs> We're filming right now. Hi. Do you want me? Is that She's ready? got food! She's got it's food! Brussels sprouts, Nick! Ew! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a head crusher! Um, Brussels sprouts, okay, you cut them up, you <laughs> boil them, you put them with cheese, the you put a little X in the bottom, and that's it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Band stuff. We got a show coming up. You better be there. Oh, yeah. It's only five dollar admission, all ages. Really now. Oh, we were in a kill. Eight o'clock so. p.m. The Jam Crib. Still looking for a couple other bands. So if you want to join up, let us know. Be there and don't be square. Be oval. Or possibly obtuse. You can be square. Pentagon. Round a Pentagon. We're not. So we're not. We're not a restricting band. You can be square if you happen to be square. Go ahead and show up. I prefer a king. He's racist to get squares. Yeah, That's dude. Alright, this week I'm being in a band, we're talking about songwriting. Yes. The key, the key part of songwriting is being able to work with Together. the people who are not playing guitar right now! I was coming up with a riff! It didn't work. So, um, but yeah, the important part is communication, like we talked about last week, about camaraderie, the way we, we talk to each other and communicate. I mean, yeah, Andy writes a lot of the riffs, but Gus also... Comes up with a lot of sick drum beats. As I said, someone sponsored this boy. I make him make him heavier. And he doesn't Andy's like Andy's technique was like, I like that riff, now try it with double bass. Anyway, so when we're doing that, uh, yeah, I do come up with most of the riffs. Um, Has there like, recently been bridging out more and bringing in more riffs of his own? Ian's written a lot of great riffs, too. You're such I've a written nice most young lad. of the riffs. He's a strapping yeah, young lad. Strapping no, young no, lad. no, I haven't written all of them. I'm a strapping short lad. The, um, pretty much the entire second half of Good Thing I Met Chernobyl, pretty much all of Chernobyl was Ian. I pretty much wrote all of, um... Good Thing I Bad was no, you. No. Oh, the intro riff was me. Yeah, he, he wrote a lot of that one, too. But I wrote, like, most of, uh, the, the Death of a God. Yeah, I don't really write riffs. I come up with ideas like, hey, try that. Yeah, me too. I've done that one. The only riff that he's actually, uh -huh. that I remember that he used, we had to cut, we, we cut out from, because of a I think former I think bass player. Song. Our song Why originally had a bass intro and just kept progressing on top of it. I wrote the bass intro back when I used to play bass, and 
TJ, who used to be in the band, was like, oh, that riff sucks. We're never going to use that. And he comes back and plays bass. Like, here, I came up with this great riff. And I was like, that's mine. And he's like, shut up. and No, it isn't. Uh, he stole my bass riff. And we don't even use it anymore. Uh, we all, well, the important part is we all interject into what we think is good. And we just try to be a well-oiled machine because it's just taking all the ideas as a group and trying to figure out what feels and sounds right for everyone. Because we're, we all have different musical interests and musical backgrounds, so we're all naturally going to have different opinions. A good thing to keep in mind about songwriting is having the idea of the song in your head. Don't just go in just like, oh, we're just going to write this and that and this and that. If you've done in the past, they, they've come out all right, but the songs we've written with an idea in mind before we've written them turn out way better. Like Death of a God. That turned out way better than, say, The Tower, which we just wrote as we went along. They're both like great songs. I like them I'm, both too. But they're both great songs. But the composition. Yeah, the compositionally, one's better than the other. I mean, it's kind of like if you write all your songs spontaneously, you kind of get into a groove. Of Our Crap. groove is um like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, verse, chorus. That's what we've done on like half of our songs. Uh, also, like when we wrote in the middle of the song we're writing right now, which we don't really have a name for right now. And trust for Paul. And trust for Paul, yes. But like, what? Uh, we have, we, I, I came up with the idea, and then we just build up upon that. And basically, it's just, we're, we're going for a more progressive, like, darker feel for this song. It's turning out really well. I mean, I, I feel like it's one of our better composed songs, like, composition wise, because it has a really good feeling to it. And I really believe that, you know, in writing songs, communication is key. Yeah, also, if you go back to our earlier stuff, Monster War is incredibly simple, simple and... Still the best one. Yeah. Well, Some I... people's opinions. It's, it's boring as hell to play, even if you like the song. I mean, we we want to have some fun, too, you know? That's when you jump on I'm a playing roller coaster song. while you play it. That's because you got more than one note to play in that. Exactly! <laughs> <laughs> you had three! <laughs> <laughs> Look, the song pretty much is three chords. It was the first song we ever wrote. We might have another segment on this in the future if we come up with any more. And if we can be more focused. Yeah. That's one of the biggest problems about songwriting. One of the biggest problem, problems about songwriting is keeping on track or with anything with the band. We usually get sidetracked. I mean, making these videos, you don't see for a fourth of the material we record because we're usually just fucking no, like three fourths around. Three fourths of the material. Yeah, you prob you prob say. yeah, you probably only see about a fourth, maybe a fifth of the stuff. <laughs> maybe a probably sixth. Wait, actually, probably less than that. Maybe like, like, maybe a tenth. Yeah, about a tenth of the stuff that is in these episodes. That's what you see. Like, 90, like, three, two, I, don't we all have, like, ADD to a degree? All oh. of us do. Everybody in the world does. Yeah, that, see, it's We bad. have it. I have severely. I'm trying to stay on top. And Sorry. no one trusts us. Writing songs gets ridiculously annoying sometimes. Sometimes we do get mad at each other. And but a good way to do that is be able to take breaks regularly. Work, work, work for a short amount of time. Maybe not short, but a decent, like an hour. Take a break for an hour. Just sit down. We got three, six Video games. games. Go out, get some Taco Bell or something. Do a barrel roll. Just hang out and talk. <laughs> something. Because so, we've done that in the past where we just work constantly like for six hours straight writing and playing. Uh, and we get exhausted. We get pissed off at each other, yeah. we get distracted, and then we get distracted, we get even more pissed off at each other. And you cannot expect to write songs and be functional as a band if you don't spend hours per practice. Yeah, we spend we spend six hours of practice two or three times a week to get ha as good as we are, and we're not the most prolific of bands. I mean, we're pretty good, but we're not out there. Yeah, we don't practice, like, constantly. Though. Honestly, the important part of writing songs is practicing together. You've got to practice. You can't yeah. just write a bunch of songs and then instantly expect them to be amazing. Yeah. They can be amazing the first time. <laughs> yeah. Not the or second time. You think they're amazing the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Nick, and this is Nick's Little Corner. Uh, something to talk about. Excel Saga. This cameraman's sister gave me a DVD and I couldn't stop laughing because it's just so dumb <laughs> but it's so funny if you haven't seen it you must look at it right now go watch it right now all right 
It's time for the top four. This week's top four is album covers. Yes. All right. I love how Andy was ready. And Andy actually has all these top four on final. Okay, number four. Holy Mountain by Sleep. It's, look at that, I mean, trippy. You'll get a bigger picture of it up. But, yeah, but yeah. It, take some shrooms and watch this, and it'll make much more sense. Dude, like, it, it glows in the dark, man. It does? Not glows in the dark, but like fluorescent. It's Oh, beautiful. like black light? Yeah. Cool. This is one. <laughs> Alright, my number four is D is uh, Holy Diver by Dio. Mm. And he's actually wearing that shirt right now. Yeah, that is a great just album. the big cover. demon just. Then you dedicate a song to me from that. Stand and shout. Stand up and shout, yeah. 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 Stand up. First deal one I ever heard. My number four is uh, Disturbed's newest album, uh, Asylum, because like it's a it's like a con conglomerate of their uh, of their past albums, and it's just really cool artwork, and like you don't really see like that style of artwork on album covers. I mean, you usually see like majestic stuff or like it's almost an anime style, which I find really cool. All right, Ian. My number four is Cannibal Corpse's Tomb of the Mutilated. I don't, need, I don't even need to explain it. The picture's there. Yeah, why is it so... Just, just it's Cannibal it Corpse. It's Cannibal Corpse, dude. Oh, I have All their album that covers are censored. person's like on the slab and they're getting butchered and... No, that's butchered at birth. That's, that's the album that I have. Alright, Ian? Nick? Ian and Nick. Uh, Nick, what's your number Nick. four? You know, number four, I'd probably have to say the Pork Soda Pig. <laughs> pork Soda... Pork Soda... Primus. Because it's... You look at it and you just think it's derp. just you just look at it, just kind of like terrifying and derpy all in the same bundle. Primus oh, well, that is what Primus says. They're terrifying and derp all in one. All right. Terrifying. Number three, Andy. Nuclear assault, game over. Game yeah, over, it's man. a good, great one. It's, it's got a little boom and a bunch of people are like ah and yeah, groovy man. All right, my number three. I actually only know one song off this album. Huh. I think it's a fucking cool album cover. Perpetual Flame by Ingve Malmsteen's Rising Force. Hey, Ingve! Just Ingve standing there playing guitar and his hands on fire. So simple yet so freaking awesome. Well, you know what's real? His hands catch fire when he plays. So you no, know, he's fast. just there, just shredding. His hands just burst into flame. <laughs> I don't know if you're telling the truth or lying. Go <laughs> see it live. Go Google it. <laughs> All right. Well, I just recently changed my mind on what my third is. Since we're talking simple, System of a Down self-titled album. It's just a ham. It's all like dirty looking, but like what's great about that that album cover is when you go into the leaflet, it's the, it's their faces all like painted up and it looks like you're it's just demented, but it like it has no words on it. It's just a hand. It's like when I first saw that on the shelf, I was like, is this a band called Hand? <laughs> Had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Ian? Judas Priest, Defenders of the Faith. I got it's that just, shirt. This is an album that I have, and it's just. Well, Priest always did over-the-top and outlandish album covers, and it's just it's just cool. Looking. Is it got, like, the big robot lion on it? Yeah, that thing. I don't even really know what it is. It's, it's like a robot lion on a tank that. tracks with, uh, <laughs> They have that on sale with the wooden nickel. Nick, what's yours? Way of the Fist by Five Finger Death Punch, uh, just because that, uh, that skull is cool I love looking. that skull. It's awesome. It just looks awesome. Wait, I don't know that one. I guess I will soon when I Google it. Alright, number th two, yeah. Andy. Yeah. We have arrived by Dark Angel, the LP cover. It's <laughs> only I think this picture's only on the LP though. It's pretty cool. It's, it's got a lot of naked people on it. Yes. <laughs> Gonna get some U boobs tonight. U boobs. U boob on U boobs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> My number two is Kill 'Em All by Metallica. Just the hammer and the blood is awesome. I've never cared for Metallica's album covers that much. It's more of a music I like, but Kill 'Em All's great. Whenever I see, I just hear the riff from Seek and Destroy in my head. So yeah, Noah? My number two! As we all talk about these albums more come to mind. So, um, Killswitch's End of Heartache is a really cool, like... Killswitch Engage? Yeah, oh, Killswitch Engage. That, that album's Engage. really cool. It's, an, it's a cool album cover, because it's like a, a metallic flower, and it has these pins stuck in it. And that's one version. That's the, the special album. edition. Yeah, the special edition. That's the one I'm talking about, but the, uh, but the normal version... Yeah, special, the normal one that just has a heart with pins stuck in it, which is... It, it's pretty cool, so... That's my number two.